Hello everybody, good morning, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today's an exciting day because look what I've got. Yep, I ordered a um, cover stitch machine from um, e Costura over here in Spain and it's taken a week to come and um, there's been some um, delivery and distribution problems over here in Spain at the moment and I have been waiting for this so for all those people who've got Amazon Prime and get next day delivery congratulations but for me I had to wait for um, oh, just over a week for this to arrive so I'm more than ready to open this up but I thought I'd bring you with me and um, we'll have a look and see what's in the box and see what it looks like and I'll give you some ideas to what it works um, first off just to explain that a cover stitch machine is kind of sits alongside an overlocker um, they're not the same machine by any, any stretch of the imagination. Um, so an overlocker actually cuts as it neatens over the edge and is used a lot with um, stretch fabrics for construction, but also on woven fabrics just for neatening the edges. Where a cover stitch machine comes in is that when you want to actually hem those knitted garments, you need to turn under your fabric to then create a hem, but you want the, the the dual stitching line as well. So you'll see it typically at the bottom of t-shirts or um, polo shirts, that type of thing. So anything that's got a bit of a stretch to it that's more like active wear, then a cover stitch will be used to hem it um, around the sleeves, possibly a bit around the neckline. And you can do one, two or three needle cover stitch. And for those people who use a twin needle on your sewing machine, it does a, a great job as well. But I think you'll agree with me that if you've used it for any length of time, perhaps with children's or for active wear, people who aren't, I mean, we we're tend to be a bit more careful with our clothes because we know that it, it won't take as much stretching on a twin needle on a domestic machine. Um, but with an overlock, you get much more flexibility and it's a much more professional finish. So that's the reason why I've bought one because I'm finding that I'm doing more knit um, projects and I am also wanting to use the cover stitch rather than an overlocker just to do some edging stitches around um, some of my garments being like this one as well. So I, I did use one um, for the first time over at Sewing Bee in Stapleford um, and since then I've been saving up for a cover stitch machine. I was hooked immediately. That was a Janome. Um, this is a Juki machine um, and I've chosen Juki because from all the reviews, this is a semi-industrial machine that is really, really robust. So I'm, I'm hopeful that I'm gonna miss the slip skipped stitches that some of the Janome machines tend to have, um, not just Janome, other, others as well. So I'm hoping that this one is going to be far more robust from all the reviews and research that I've done. Um, they're not cheap. This one is about just over 700 euros. So it's a lot of money and it's a major investment, but I'm hopeful that um, I've, I've bought one um, and that it will be a real, um, workhorse in my sewing room and that'll last me for many years if I look after it. So a major investment for me, I, my sewing machine didn't even cost that much money and I know that I won't use it all the time but I think in terms of elevating my garments and adding a new dimension to my stitching then I think it was the next stage for me definitely. Um, I will start saving up now for a new sewing machine. Um, just, just to add to the thing, my Janome, I've got um, an SMD 3000 um, and that's been absolutely fabulous. It really, really has served me well. However, I just need to be aware that it is several years old now and I do look after it, but you never know. So if I start and save up now, then <clears throat> by the time I've, I've, I've got enough money to, to treat myself to something new, then I should have enough in the kitty. This is the theory. Anyway. So let me get on with unboxing this and I thought that I'd bring, with you, bring you with me and share the excitement, hopefully. It might be of interest to somebody if you're thinking about ordering one or if you've, um, if you've got one as well, then you can see, or you're interested in one, then you can see what you actually get for your money. Um, okay, bear with me and I'll get started. Okay, so I have changed camera angle, just so hopefully this will give you more of a view. Um, I haven't opened it myself yet. Box has had a little bit of a bump on the corner here but hopefully that's not going to have affected it. It feels fairly robustly packaged. Um, let me just uh, get on with this. I'm going to be very careful when I'm going through here. Take off the packing information. is stapled shut as well as um, as well as being 
the sellotape shut. Just being careful with that. Oh, oh. muscles this morning. Okay, let's have a look and see what we have here. So, this is what it looks like. Press the foot, very important. An inspection certificate, so I've got one of those. And then this is the extra um, insert for putting the cones on. There's a bit more here. And this is for on the top for holding the threads. So it's got for the four threads. Four, five, possibly five threads actually. It's got room for five there. I have got to learn how to use it properly as well. So what have we got here? Plastic cover in here. Some needles. Let's see if I can get it open. So this looks like a plastic cover for it. Well, that's great because also I was going to make a fabric cover for it so I can use that as a template, which would be great. I'll make a pattern from that. Got some um, tops for if I use regular spools. Spare packet of Schmetz Universal Needles. I do like my Microtex, so anybody who follows me will know I like my Microtex. A small Allen key screwdriver. Oh, look what's in there. A little brush. Tweezers. And I think this will be netting for over the top. Yes, it is. It's a netting for over the top of a spool. Just for making sure that the thread doesn't come off too quickly. If only one of those, I'd have thought there would have been more of that, actually. So we'll see what we find as we go further down. Pop those back in there so that we don't lose any of those. Very plasticky smell to that cover. I might take a little bit of airing. Again, so I don't lose anything. Oh, and there she is. Instruction manual, a printed one. Fabulous, because on my overlocker, I only got a, um, a DVD with it or a CD with it. Well, my laptop doesn't have a CD and I wanted to oil it the other day, so I'm gonna have to message my cousin Dawn and ask her to um, send me over details because she's got the same overlocker as me. So she, I'm sure she'll send that over to me and let me know what's happening. And where I need to oil it. Oh, oh it's quite heavy. Nothing else in the box, just the polystyrene at the bottom. with um, loose threads. Now I've gone for the MCS um, 1500 on my on my Duke, on my um, cover stitch. Oh, sorry, rustling. Um, I did look at the 1800 as well, but the difference was that it got an LED light, not um, a standard light. And also it had got um, a hammer attachment in with it. Now I've ordered the hammer attachment from Amazon um, and that is about 30 to 35 pounds with the delivery. Um, but that should absolutely make sure I've got really nice crisp hems on, on my stitching. Um, I should have ordered it sooner because I would have had it by now. But, you know, we learn, we learn as we go along, don't we? Um, but in terms of the um, machine, I decided that because this was going to be used so infrequently and, and not really for very lengthy periods of time that actually the extra, I think it was going up towards 900 pounds, I think for the, the newest model. I thought, you know what, actually this one would be really good. And also the other thing is that here in Europe, the, um, the MCS 1500 is the current model as well. So the 1800 is, is the ultra new one that they'd have to specially order in. So again, I just thought it was an extra step that I didn't need to go to. Um, so we've got the threads wrapped around here um, and it's threaded up four, one, two, three, the different um, four um, things. This is for the um, threads. 
And there's a little arrow on the top which you put on top of there for the thread. And just push in. So we need to be careful not to knock that because I can imagine that could feel quite delicate. And then there's a space, space on the back here. Oh, it's got suction cups as well. That holds on to it nicely. Um, and then the um, extra plate here just goes into the, into the back just here. And should click in place or it just holds in place there. That should be enough. And just spin it around again. So yes, really pleased with this so far. I'm going to give it a test run um, shortly and have a look and see how we get on. Um, it is a new machine to me pretty much completely. So I'll, I'll feel like a beginner again with this and trying to sort out the tension. The um, threading on it is supposed to be quite easy. There's a little catch to bring the looper, um, the looper arm back over again. Oh, silica gel here, not just attached to that. Um, and so, yeah, so, sorry, getting distracted. Um, and so um, I'll have a practice with it and um, read my instruction manual, make sure I get it set up properly. Um, and then I'll bring you with me as I do some stitches later on and show you, I've got some sewing to do. So we'll see how we get on with it. So bear with me and um, I'll be back to you soon. It's very exciting. So I'm just getting it all set up. I've just attached each of my threads onto the ends of the, um, threads that were already left there were in this case it was white and I, I need to use the black so I've just popped that on now um, and what I'm doing is just going to start and pull through the threads so I've watched a couple of videos and I believe that I can thread it that way if I start to struggle then I'll stop take the threads off and then I'll, I'll, I'll thread it it is it is supposed to be fairly easy to do but something that's quite interesting is it's, it's 1.8 meter power cable which is quite nice and long so I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by that at this moment in time and so let's just get on and do these. I've lifted up, I've got through the bottom thread, um, the, the bottom looper, and then I'm just going to take each of these in turn and being careful to see which one is moving. I'm going to guide the thread through and around the um, tension cable. That's it, it's gone through and round. And then it's gone down to the needle. So what I'm going to do now is just pull it proud of the needle snip off the knot that I had, pull out the white thread and then I can then using the tweezers that were enclosed I'm going to thread the machine. I'm going to set it up exactly as it is now with all of the all of the threads through but the um, the first job I want to do, <laughs> I talk to you. The first job I want to do is to hem um, some polo shirts. So the um, I'm going to do that first, and that needs two needles. So for now, I'm going to do the three, have a little practice and a little play, have a look through the instruction book. Ooh, just get this in the needle. Doesn't want to go in, folks. Let me put the light on. That might help if I can find the switch. Yes, there we go. That should help a lot. Well, it's a nice bright light. Age old technical thing of licking the end of the thread. It does keep the fibres together though, it does work. I'm sure there's other ways, more hygienic ways of doing it, but for this, this will do. So that's the first needle threaded. Let's do the same with the next one. Okay, they actually pass very nicely through the um, tension loops, that was good. Take off the knot and let's thread this one up. Can put the plastic foot down now that we've got the thread through the tension loop. I do find it really helps not to be frightened of your cover stitch or your overlocking machine. I know that they can be a little bit challenging sometimes in terms of um, threading, but it's really important that you get to grips with it because if you always feel um, nervous about it or using it, you're really gonna have problems all the way through. So do take some time to get used to threading your machine. Um, it, it might seem like it's really unnatural at first and you're not quite sure and you don't think you're ever going to get it, um, but eventually, Believe me, you will. 
it will come together and it's just one of those pain barriers it's a bit like using um we had a new tv box and it's a bit like using a remote a new remote control for the tv once you have a new system but once you've got it and you've got the hang of it then you can feel really confident with it so don't let don't let having to learn something new put you off because actually it's really good for us as well isn't it for our brains to learn something new or oh, this one's going to catch slightly just help it through oh it's got caught on the side there that's why why has that one gone around oh there it is there we go so very simple just to pull the threads through take off the knot I'm sure I'll have fast forwarded this when I edit this video because I don't think you'll want to see me doing all of this bit. I've been a, like a cat on a hot tin roof until this machine has arrived. I must admit. Threads are not tangled on our needles as they are slightly. That's better. One, two, three, all threaded. And I believe that from the videos that I've watched, you just leave the threads on the top. And we've got a piece of fabric here that was inside the um, the testing piece of fabric. And there are comprehensive pictures actually on the inside of the on the inside of the machine. If I just tip it up slightly, that tells us how to thread it just on the front here, and also it tells us how to use the two, uh, the narrow two, the wide two, and the three needle overlock um, cover stitch. But also it shows us how to use a single needle chain stitch on there, and then on the other side over here. On the plate here, there's information colour coded as to how to um, how to thread that as well. So apologies that I seem to have been getting a bit of a white out with the light. I'll see if I can adjust that in a second. Keep your fingers crossed, folks. I'm going in. So I'm just going to take off these big threads. Let's have a go. First stitches, you're here to witness it with me. Oh, no. Trapped my, my threads into the machine. Let's take those out. Foot down. And this actual foot has actually got two sides to it. So when you're hemming, actually the, the, split, the foot is split. So one side of the foot can go higher than the other. So that should keep your stitches nice and neat as well. But um, foot pedals plugged in. Oh, foot pedals plugged in. Made me jump. Press the, press the foot pedal by mistake. And let's have a go. Sounds nice and quiet, doesn't it? You can't see over there, can you? Let me see if I can move you forward. So I've just had a practice run. Look how stretchy these stitches are, folks. Really stretchy. And that's a really stretchy fabric. Anybody who's tried to use a twin needle on a sewing machine knows that that's not easy. Stitch quality is good as well. This is what the white was done in the factory. This is what's been done just now by me. Um, the only thing is that one of my threads broke as I started to stitch, so I've just got to work out what's happened there. And there's a, um, the other thing to bear in mind with the cover stitch is how easily it unravels. Just watch this. If I just pull on this thread at the back, the underneath thread, look how it's looped underneath and it just pulls straight out. So that is something to be aware of because that will un undo very easily. Um, and I, I need to just make sure that I get my knotting off and my tying off and my ends really um, nailed down. And, and that's one thing that I can do. I believe that when you pull it through from the from the back, when you finish off, and I'll show you how to do that, that, that it, it locks the stitches off. But starting, it might be that we have to just thread the, the stitches through somehow in order that we can then 
um, knot those off and make sure they don't undo. So let me have a look and see how what, what I did wrong with the threading because it will definitely be operator error and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so I've just done a three row here. I think this needs some work with the differential feed. That feels like that's um, pulling as it's coming through. But generally, I'm really pleased with that. It's worked straight away, straight out of the box. Um, I'll just um, do another just do another row of stitching. We'll just take off some of these ends so they don't get confusing as to which bits we're working with. Um, and I think it's a bit... It's a bit like a sewing machine. You don't, um, and unlike an overlocker, you don't run off the end of your fabric with your threads. Um, you have to stop whilst you're in the in your piece of um, fabric. So I've got my foot up. I think, again, you can also lift up the toe to put your foot underneath, to put the um, work underneath. You're starting from a flat edge. Or you can lift your presser foot up in order to place the fabric, especially if you're in the round on a hem. So let me just um, do some stitches. And the way to finish is you finish in your work, there's no reverse button, and then you make sure your needle's right at the top, lift your foot up, and then you use something, I mean, I'm gonna use the tweezers, and use them on the flat, make sure you've not got the points pointing upwards, and then you scoop underneath to pick up the three threads, and they're quite stiff. You then cut through those before you then pull your work out to the back. And in doing so, it pulls the top threads through to the back and locks them off so that they're not going to undo. So then you'd just be able to then just do a little knot if you wanted to, or you can thread the tail ends using an, um, an, I've got an overlocker tool, and just thread those ends down there so that, that finishes off nicely. So again, that's the back of the machine. Um, nice finish there. And as I say, I think I just need to play a little round with the differential because it's just distorting it slightly. So I think testing is going to be key with this um, on the fabrics that you're going to use. But as I've shown, it, it does un undo very easily at the back. So that's going to be in its, in it, to its um, credit when we're um, using it. And if we, go, if, we, if we go wrong, go wrong, really? Yes, occasionally we all go wrong. So um, we can have a look at that. So I'm going to get on and have another little play with that. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this with me. Um, and if you um, fancy how, seeing what we do, and I'll, I'll, I'll try it for a few days and, um, before I post this video. And then there might be one or two little tips that I find. Um, and if there are, then I'll post them. And if not, then um, we'll leave it as it is. So um, I'll, um, I'll, 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 I'll do a little bit of a conclusion video um, or a conclusion clip. Um, before I post this anyway. So have a great day everybody and I'll come back to you in a couple of days. So I've just finished doing my first um, polo shirt. I'm pleased with how that seems to have sewn. The edge of the polo shirt is mostly covered. I'm just going to just trim off these little bits where it's probably my cutting that isn't quite so neat. But I think that that's really cool. Um, I'm also going to just make sure I get those um, threads go through into the back and then I'm going to knot them together and then thread them through. But yeah, look at that. Very professional. Happy with that. Okay, so on to the next bit then and we'll see how we get on. So I don't know if any of you have got one of these tools. I just thought I'd show it to you while I've got it. So it comes like this. It's um, I think it's made by Prim. Um, and you clip the end on back onto there. But I don't know if you can see, but on here it's got like a little latch hook with a little um, clasp on it. 
and I use it for my overlocking ends. I know you can use a darning needle, can't you, as well, but I find this quite useful. So all that I do is go under some of the stitches, making sure that the um, latch hook goes backwards. You can't go backwards and forwards, you can only go one way. And then you use the hook to hook onto your threads. And then as you pull your threads back through, hopefully you can see the latch hook just closes, grasps onto those, and then pulls that through. And it just tidies the threads and thread ends away so that they're not going to unravel. So I just thought I would just show you that little tool because we all like our little tools, don't we? Um, I'm just going to press this hem as well. And then that's one of my polo shirts that needed hemming finished. And um, another successful thing. So let me get on and do some more. So I have just noticed one thing, and that is that there's some marks on the edge here that tells you the different... Um, Oh, I can't move it. Um, that tells you the th different things. There's one point five, two point five, and three point five with little marks in between halfway through. And what I've found is that they can be quite difficult to see. So I've just got some of these little post-it note um things that I use when I'm recording, just to remind me to look at the camera and not to not to look at um at the screen. And so I've just popped one of those onto my bed. I mean, obviously it's just re removable, but that's just helping me line it up with the edge here and I'm sure you can get edge tape but I just thought I'd just show you how I'm using that as an aid just to and also when it goes to a lump I'm, I'm just helping it through slightly so there's no drag but yeah I've got the edge of my fabric here and I'm just running it along the where that point is And then it's coming out really nicely on the back here. And you see it's absolutely fully enclosing that, that hem and just really making it um, really nice. So yeah, very pleased. I'll carry on and do some more. And if I find anything else, I'll let you know. Hello everybody, it's Claire back again and I'm just doing what I promised and that is to do a quick roundup video at the end just to just for a few seconds just to say that I'm really pleased with my Juki um, cover stitch machine. It's um, really, really changing my, I tried to think of the right words, it's really, really elevating my sewing um, and my finishing. So definitely we'll be using it for, for hems on cuffs, like um, on jersey fabric and also on sleeves and on um, on the bottom of a bodice as well. Um, also on the bottom of a skirt work really well as well. So for now, I'm gonna wrap it up for now. Hopefully it's been useful. Hopefully there's a few tips that I've um, popped across and you've enjoyed um, finding out all about my new machine with me and the difference between an overlocker and a cover stitch. So if you fancy buying one, then yeah, absolutely start saving up and see what you can do. Obviously, if you're lucky enough and you can buy one outright, then give it a go if you think it's going to help your sewing. Um, and hopefully from the explanation I've given you, then then you'll know whether it will be will be the right type of machine for you. There's lots on the market. It doesn't just have to be a Juki. Um, but for me, I'm really happy with my choice. So I want to wish you a really, really good day and a good week with all of your projects. Just remember... It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect all the time. So give yourself grace if you're learning and learning something new. Um, credit to you for, for picking up a challenge and for having a go to project. And that is definitely what, what we need to remember sometimes because we see all these fabulous things online that people are making and we forget the years of experience and practice that have gone behind them. So um, give yourself good grace. Enjoy what you do. Remember, it's about enjoying the process. And um, if you get anything new, then let me know and I'll enjoy sharing your new purchases with you as well. So until next time, hope you have a great week. Take care, everybody. Bye.